Today I'm working on a Western Digital hard drive that arrived opened up. And uh, after initial inspection, uh, it just appeared to me that it would be a really good case uh, to uh, demonstrate um, and uh, explain some of the risks that are involved when you open up hard drives at home or uh, work on them you know, without uh, proper equipment. So this device, uh, on the first glance, didn't really look too bad at all, and um, it seemed like a regular case where client got curious, opened up the lid, saw that it looks fine, nothing is stuck, uh, and uh, everything kind of rotates how it's supposed to and sealed it back up. But I can't really confirm any of that because I wasn't there when it was open. So now we have to deal with an aftermath. Uh, when drives come in with the seals that are open, they need full inspection. It's more work for us because when drives come in with, and they're sealed, uh, the causes of failure, they're natural. And uh, inspections um, can be done pretty precisely just by looking at the head assembly. Platters will, uh, the condition of platters will be actually explained by what head assemblies look like if the drive comes in sealed. But when the drive comes in open, we don't know what the head assembly is going to look like. When we get the drive that has been to another data recovery shop, we don't even know if that head assembly is original or not. So looking at this head assembly right now, we see that head uh, uh, zero is contaminated badly, but head number uh, two wasn't as badly contaminated. So in the head assembly, the sequence of heads in our specific case begins with zero, then it goes to one, then it goes to two, and then it goes to three. So the bottom disk uh, carries head zero and one, the top disk carries head two and three. Right now you're looking at head one, and uh, the lowest one that's kind of turned away from us, that's head zero. To clean them, I'm just going to use a really fine and soft brush that I picked up at the craft store and 99% IPA. Those things together work pretty well. I am not going to argue that this is the best or a must to do type of option to clean heads. There are other techniques that exist and uh, for different technicians, techniques that they use, they will also be uh, based on the preference, right? So some people wash them differently. Um, I've heard that some people um, use ultrasonic uh, baths to clean um, head assemblies, but I tried it. It didn't seem to bring that great of results. I actually bought a Crest ultrasonic cleaner specifically to do uh, this job and the results weren't as good so I now just wash printed circuit boards in it. Small PCBs like memory cards and um, flash drives after I've done some work on them. Not that I really need it but <laughs> it's there so that's what I use it for. Uh, with uh, cleaning sliders, sometimes it will take multiple attempts. Uh, single attempts in rare occasions do magic, but uh, in this specific case, I'm actually going to have to wash it quite a bit because uh, the residue that is stuck on there seems to be pretty resilient to IPA and doesn't really want to go away. With every pass, it goes away a little bit. And now it seems like most of it is gone and the head is getting shiny again so that's uh, a definitely a good start maybe some more cleaning will be needed but we'll see how that goes uh, green light is used to inspect the surface of the disc and uh, from what I saw on the top it didn't really uh, ring out any alarms right away this is pretty uh, common uh, condition for the top first of all let me tell you this the top surface even in the cleanest conditions possible, will have some contamination on it, just because the seal uh, that goes around the edge of the drive, when it's uh, when the drive is sealed up, 
uh, that seal is like silicone, right? Uh, lint and dust from exterior get stuck to it. And when you pry open the lid on the drive, some of it breaks free and some of it lands on the top surface of the disc. So that's totally normal. When you see a little bit of dust sitting on top of the top on top surface of the top disc, that's totally normal. What isn't normal is the cloudiness that you see appearing on the surface of the disc right now. That's unusual. I was very surprised to see that on the bottom disc. It would have we often see stuff like this on the top disc when Somebody put a fingerprint on their drive and then watched the drive spin uh, for some time and all of that contamination gets picked up and smeared around the disc or somebody uh, put a fingerprint on their disc and then they pulled out a Kleenex to wipe it off and then just makes um, whole health breaking loose. In our situation, it's the lower disc Technically, there is no easy way to access it, but nonetheless, we're dealing with the aftermath here. I don't know how that would have gotten in there, but uh, as long as the damage isn't permanent, uh, it will be removed from the surface during the, the decontamination stage. Now, uh, looking at it at the surface of the disc right now, right at the edge, there is a scratch that uh, I will not be able to buff out, I will not be able to clean, it will be there permanently. So the sad news is that that scratch starts after the parking ramp. And if it starts after the parking ramp, uh, there is no easy way to um, eliminate um, access uh, of corresponding head uh, from interacting with the area where that scratch is. Uh, there are ways to, to do that, but I wouldn't do that on the first pass. My go-to technique uh, to work with problems like this is to um, get the service area copy, either from Head Zero or Head One for Western Digital, and record that service area to another unit that has the same head map that uh, belongs to the same family and use that uh, host for a hot swap procedure. The hot swap procedure will allow that host to initialize with credentials of our patient and then uh, we just swap them out without forcing second initializ initialization um, on the patient. Uh, that eliminates the stress that the drive goes through every time it's powered on and powered off because every time we're going to be powering on the device we'll be powering it on using the host. So let's put the drive back together. I wanted to uh, show you what the modified head assembly uh, looks like because two out of four uh, sliders, two out of four heads I should say, uh, are now removed from the assembly. This is what the head assembly looks like after modifications. Only two out of four heads uh, are left on there and uh, that will help us prevent further contamination uh, by having those heads dragging across the surfaces that are scratched. Uh, it will also uh, help not to disturb heads that are still present because if those two heads uh, were not removed they would drag across the surfaces that are scratched out first of all creating vibrations and uh, uh, some platter dust would be peeling off that scratched surface that would eventually land on healthy surfaces uh, causing this ripple effect that will uh, blow out fairly fairly quickly so I'll definitely be making a sequel on the hot swap procedure to show you guys how this whole uh, scenario ended up. Uh, but if you have any questions regarding uh, any of the stuff that I've done today, feel free to post uh, your comments in the comment section below. For those who are new to this channel, if you're into data recovery, 
uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button to be notified the next time the new video drops. Uh, thank you guys for your support and I'll be more than happy to see all of you in the next episode.